is uh, recorded and so all uh, the things like even the in-call messages are also being recorded and so I can see those students who are participating. Okay, okay. so last meeting we have discussed the definition. So last meeting we have defined what is security and also we identify that security is um, a state of being free from fear or from hazard. Okay, no? And we have defined also hazard that meeting as why is it that my slide is not working? Can you see it? Ano nakikita ninyo? Yes, ma'am. Definition of security? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, po, ma'am. Sana naman po, ma'am. Ah, okay. Sige, medyo... Medyo... Hindi na yung aking ano. Sige, this one. Okay, so last uh, meeting also we have defined hazard, okay, and uh, when we say hazard, it's a condition that may cause damage to property, injury, or loss of life, and um, exposure to the chance of loss or injury is also hazard, and it's either caused by man or by nature. So, and the last time we also discussed why security is important. So, security is important uh, talking about the economic um, part of socioeconomic part or aspect of our country. Security is important because, as what I have mentioned, sino ba ang gusto mag invest sa bansa? Uh, na hindi secure yung kanyang pera, di ba? So that is why it's very important to uh, make a particular country or even our community safe. It's because if the country is safe or if our community is safe, uh, there are a lot of investors na gusto mag-invest sa lugar natin. Okay. Um, and sabi natin, the security could impede the growth of our country. Uh, it is because we cannot deny the fact that there are two types of threats in our country. We have the internal, which is consists of the communist aggression. So, dito papasok yung ating mga NPA. Kumbaga, yung even crimes and criminality is also considered as um, an internal threat. Diba? Uh, another concern is kung halimbawa sa, sa lugar ninyo medyo, medyo magulo yung mga community, mga kapitbahay mo doon, diba? Who would like to invest in that particular area? So that's considered as an internal threat. Now we also have the external threat which is, ito yung ating sinasabi, sinasabi ko last time, no? Na Ito yung ating threat sa mga ibang bansa. So, uh, that is why, as what I have mentioned, na our President Duterte, medyo okay yung kanyang strategy na nakipagkaibigan sa sa Russia and sa China. It's because um, if kalabanan natin yun, we cannot actually, uh, I am like a uh, 100% sure na hindi natin kaya kalaban yung mga ganun kalalaking bansa. Although, although kung baga kung si president natin, uh, good ang strategy na yun. Pero minsan, <clears throat> napapansin niyo na ano rin, parang yung mga bansa like the China, parang sumasobra na rin kasi um, may mga like sa Spratly Island, the other are concerns with regards to the um, ano, occupation of the uh, 
tahu um, itu the Chinese in our country parang baka in the next a uh, few years baka puro Chinese lang nandito sa Pilipinas kasi yun isang isa siguro sa mga nakikita nila kasi they are helping our country so ganun kasi ang uh, policy kasi siyempre di ba kung ikaw may tutulungan ka um, even though hindi mo sinasabi na you expect a return pero um, kung ikaw naman na tinulungan para you cannot say no naman kasi tinulungan ka so that's actually the problem with the Filipinos no? parang mabilis tayo or hindi natin nakakalimutan yung upang kaloob and actually that's that's actually considered as a problem and as a threat na rin okay now uh, with regards to this threat no the PNP or the Philippine National Police takes responsibility in the supervision, control, training, and operation of security agencies and the issuance of license to operate and the license to practice the security profession. So as I have mentioned last meeting, now, um, although security officers are not uh, equal with the PNP, it's because of una yung qualification sa security officer. You can join the security uh, agency even if you are a high school graduate, as long as you possess the license. Um, while the PNP naman, they need to be a baccalaureate degree holder. Now, even though, even though uh, security officers are um, like medyo at par with the PNP still it is the PNP that trains them so it is as if they are also considered as kumbaga ano tawag nito um, helper or ano ba yung tam term na pwede yung ano ka kaagaba kaakibat ka kaagabay ng PNP sa pagpapatupad ng magpayapang basta or magpayapang komunidad. So, kumbaga, uh, the trainings, the learnings that you are getting is not from any agency but from the PNP itself kung saan ang main purpose ng PNP is to serve and protect. So, hindi, kumbaga, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na um, security officer lang kasi take note they are being trained by the best uh, police officers okay so um we also define some terms like industry industrial management industrial security and also industrial security management so when we say industry we're talking about um group of workers if you are working in a company in which uh, this company is for the purpose of doing katulad na lang ng mga chinenas, ano pa ba, baso, bote, consider that, we consider that as industry. So it's a special branch of productive work or the capital or workers employed in. So in dito sa takuro anong alam niyo na industry yung masasabi natin na ano pag sinabi kasi natin industry um, usually umaabot ng mga 200 above ang kanyang workers mall po ma'am yung mall uh, are they manufacturing usually ang industry kasi is more yes pwede siguro ang mall no Ilan ba? Uh, dito sa Takuro? Or sa lugar ninyo? Factory. Mga factory, ma'am. NFA. Planta, ma'am. NFA. Planta, ma'am. No? Yung mga planta. Alam ba yung mga kwan? Kwan ng yung... banana factory. Ay, banana industry. Mm -hmm. Del Monte. Oh, may banana industry. Which is, I think, that's uh, Del Monte. Tama ba ko? Dolly po. Yes, Dolly po, ma'am. Yes, tama yung Dolphil sa Takuro, ay sa Pulubulo, no? yung pineapple. Yan, so that's an example. Okay. 
Uh, we also have in Takurom, we have the palm oil industry dito banda sa may malapit sa SKSU. Kung saan, hindi so, lang natin alam, they are actually producing tons of ano, um, palm oil. So, yun. And um, before I thought na ang palm oil is ano, medyo, kung compare mo siya sa coconut oil, siyempre, ano, mas mahal si coconut oil. Uh, mura si palm oil. It's because siguro of the, ano ba, um, siyempre the, the nutrients na makuha mo and also the process, ganun ba, ang reason. But as to the um, health benefits niya, meron din namang health benefits ang palm oil. So, ganun. That's, that's also another um industry here in Takurong. So, and there are a lot more. So, meron tayo mga sinenas, entertainment industry, kung saan uh, pag sinabi mong entertainment industry, it includes all um, talito, artists, mapamusic, mapa, ano pa ba? Mapa, mapa dance, or even, ano pa? Um, yung mga uh, comedy, yan. So, that's still considered as industry. Um, when we say industrial naman, this is, of course, those who are related to... Yes? Sarah? Mamang. So, pertaining to or engage in the industry is considered industrial. So, kaya kung halimbawa ako, I am connected with the entertainment industry and so, I am an industrial worker. So, kadalasan kasi pag sinabi ng industrial worker, parang mababa ang tumingin natin. Pero actually, it's not. Kasi ang alam lang natin na pag sinabi ng industrial worker, factory na yun, which is only one example of the industrial worker. Marami pa yun. Okay? Management is, of course, because you are dealing with people as much as possible, there is a need for a management. So, management is skillful use of means to accomplish a purpose. Like, if you are working in an entertainment industry, your purpose is, of course, to entertain the people. And so, you need to manage your workers properly for them to give quality entertainment. And that's what I call management. The industrial security naman is of course those um, workers who are working in the security in order to provide protection, in order to provide security for private individuals, uh, business, government, and non-government. Um, and when we say industrial security management, this is, of course, skillful handling of security and safety measures of business enterprises and individual establishments. So, kumbaga, our security guards here are industrial security officers and yung kanilang head ang um, ginagawa niya in order to make sure that uh, the security and safety of the employees of SCSU is kumaga, at 100% being um, manifested or implemented and so they need industrial security management. So kung yun, yun na nga ang sabi ko sa inyo, if you are a graduate of ISM, you could be, you could be an industrial security um, officer or you could be the manager. Meaning to say, you will be managing those security officers. Yeah. Now, since security officers are responsible in making sure that everyone is safe and secure, they need to, of course, implement safety measures. And when we say safety measures, we are talking about the active and the passive. So, pag sinabi natin active, meaning to say, ito yung ginagawa talaga, merong kumbaga physical na andyan. Okay. Example of that is physical barrier. Example ng physical bar barrier. <coughs> oh. 
Example ng physical barrier dito po pasok yung ating mga tense, mga kudal, mga active vector yun siya kasi kanyan. Um, we also have the security lightings, safes, bolts, locks, and other devices and gadgets designed to detect and impede hazards. We also have the passive okay, uh, measure. Uh, those that will determine from committing such acts for, for fear or being caught or charged in court to get this news. This includes security education programs. Yeah? Passive in the sense that hindi naman always si security education program. Minsan, isa lang yan, one time lang yan, pero you will learn something from it and then you can impose it, you can implement it. So, yung, yung educating ourselves in securing life, securing property, is a passive measure kasi you already have that knowledge. Um, security investigation. So, if you have the knowledge of investigating, like, kasi nga, sa subject, as a kurso ninyo, you will also be taught uh, fundamentals of investigation and intelligence. And so, that's a passive measure of uh, making sure that everyone is safe and secure. We also have the fire prevention seminar, safety drills, and personal security check. So, uh, halimbawa, the thought of having a uh, security officer, halimbawa, tayo, naisip natin na may gagawin tayo kasalanan or may gagawin tayo yung sama. Pero iniisip pa lang natin na ay basit na security guard dito, hindi pala. So that actually is considered as a passive measure. Kung baga wala mong ginagawa, walang, walang, kung baga hindi mong physical na nakikita, but you are uh, afraid to do it because uh, you are thinking na ay baka huli ako or baka ano mong yan na ako. Yan. And that's passive measure. Now, we also define some terms. Um, these terms are actually in relation to the historical background of industrial security in the Philippines. So, I know you have read yung mga patches ng security guard. Siguro next time ang uh, uh, ano ko, ang activity ko sa inyo, kung may makita ka mga security guard, picturean nyo ang ilang uh, patches para mabalha natin kung anong agency siya at kung uh, under ba sa PADPAW. And um, PADPAW kasi stands for Philippine Association of Detectives and Protective Agency Operators. As what I have mentioned last meeting, in other countries, they do not call their, particularly in Europe, no? um, they do not call yung mga security officers as security guards, but instead they call them as detectives. Um, in some parts of our country, like in Manila and even in Cebu, meron talaga mga private security um, agencies kung saan ang main na purpose nila or work nila is to detect detective job. Like um, last time, if you could still remember, I had mentioned that um, uh, nabawa, ako, may asawa ako, and then uh, I can sense na he is not loyal anymore to me. So I can ask for a private security agency to do detective work for me. So dito sa atin, kasi siyempre hindi pa ganun pa ano yung mga tao with regards to the detective agencies, um, security agencies, kaya parang tingin natin hindi hindi ganon hindi tawo nito hindi useful or parang second grade lang nga yung security yung ISM na kuto pero in other countries mabenta ito kasi hindi kaya ng tugunan o hindi kaya ng gawin lahat ng police kaya uh, they ask help from other agencies. And isang malaking tulong sa kanila actually, ang security agency kasi ang, ang trabaho nila ay depende sa trabaho ng PNP. 
So um, it is a non-stop private organization. Maybe say a non hindi sa yung non-stop private organization. Maybe to say um, it does not speak for investment for for um, financial um, tawag na to, um, aspiration. It's actually a private organization. Who's and it was formed in May 1950. So, medyo matagal na ang pagpao. Uh, the creation of our, or the organization and the operation of private detective, watchman, or security agency are, uh, or is being uh, mandated by virtue of RA 5487. So, it's the law that regulates <clears throat> security agency to operate um, detective work. Limbawa, kasi it's, it's somewhat like a business. Yun. It, even a school is a business, don't you know? Kasi, syempre, business in the sense that our students are our customers. Um, kung ang estudyante ang school, hindi po siya mag-grow. Uh, kasi, syempre, uh, although you are not paying the, the tuition, kasi counted na kayo ng government. Kasi di ba may inalat na budget ang government para sa inyo. And so, mapupunta yan nito sa school. So, si school naman, 70% of it will go to the faculty for the salary. To 30% of it will serve as the budget for the improvement of the school and other um, expenses. Um, it is okay with private schools, but at uh, public schools, but um, if you notice private schools, bakit dumadami nga mga private schools? Kasi it's, it's a business. Na, um, we can earn from it. So, um, RA 57, uh, 5487 is known as Private Security Agency. So, eto, if you have planned later to put up your own uh, security agency, it's actually a good, a good uh, business. Why? Imagine uh, it's safe ngayon yung ating community, di ba? And so, if you have the security agency, alam mo, there are how many establishments dito sa Takoro? And then, sabi natin, meron siyang 100 na security yes, So, what if, what if, uh, okay, may I request yung ano, kindly mute, no? John V, Trapa, can you mute your mic? Um, so, they have said, if in case merong kayong 100 na security guards and then yung 100 na establishment na yun, kukuha lahat ng wagda sa inyo, ang mangyayari is um, the company will pay for the security guard. So, magbabayad sila sa inyo. Or pwede din naman na mag-direct sila sa agency magbayad. Talaga ako, owner magbabayad ako sa agency ng ganito. Ang usapan natin, o oh, sige, ang one security guard is uh, 10,000. Sige, 10,000 pesos. Now, uh, ngayon, ikaw na security officer, mag-apply sa akin. Ang sasabihin ko is, okay, ganito, ang saldo lang, ang kaya ng pasaldo lang ng agency sa iyo um, is only 7,500 plus ang mga SSS benefits, feel uh, health, pag-ibig. So, yun. So, you see, um, pera na ibabayad na, na ibabayad ko sa security agency is 10,000. Ang ibabayad ko lang sa security guard is 7,500. Ako na, ano, ikaw, na owner ng security agency, you will have 3,500. Per security guard. So, halimbawa, you have 100 na security guards. 2, 5 times 100. That is how much? 
Lanjut Bapak Ayo. Mengat Oke, Mengat Mbak Ho. Ho. To five times 100. 250, 250, 250, per month. 250, 250, 250, 250, 250, 250, kundi yung company na nag-request sa iyo ng security guard. So magbabayad din sa iyo, babayaran niyo yung security guard then you can earn. So that's actually the business and that is how security agencies um benefit or um tawag nito, that is how they can they can earn money from having that security agency. So, ganun, ganun yun siya. Na, imagine niya. So, actually, kung ako ha, kung ako, I, I would like to, ano, I would like to have my own security, security agency. Kasi, it's actually a good business. It's a good business. Um, Ma'am, send me one. So we also have the PC Socia, okay, the Philippine Constabulary Supervisory Unit for Security and Investigation Agencies. Um, this was formed as a result of the approval of RA 5487, which directs the chief PC. Kasi before, guys, bago naging PNP, PC muna, Philippine Constabulary. But by virtue of the creation of RA um, 6975, the DHLG Act of 1990, kung tayat na-create ang PNP, yung tri-bureau. Yung PNP, ano yung pag narinig niyo yung tri-bureau, it actually talks about PNP, DJMP, and uh, BFP. So PNP is actually a bureau. Bureau yan siya. And so um, it was later changed to PNP Sosa when the PC was dissolved. Ito na yung sinasabi ko kasi na, na dissolved na siya. Naging PNP na siya. And personal last words to PNP. So PNP Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agency before it is responsible for the issuance of implementing orders regarding the rules and regulations affecting security agency operations. Now, question ba? Uh, sino kaya ang um, eh, di ba napansin ninyo merong mga barel ang security guard, security officer? Napansin niyo ba yun? Or yes, napansin Ah, yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma 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 ano, papalagay ninyo saan sila kumukuha ng lisensya ng mga baril nila? Or sino ang nag 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 nag-a-approve ng lisensya ng, ng mga baril nila? Depende um, po. Depende po. Police ma'am. Yeah, yes, very good. It's the PNP. Yun. So, kung ba um even even the coordination with the PNP. Kung mag all the things na ginagawa nila must be under the supervision and control of the PNP. So kaya halimbawa kaya uh, don't you know that dito sa uh, anyway this is reality naman no? um if if you have a security agency in a particular city, you must have a close coordination with the 
shift uh, of belief of the city also. Ayun. Kaya kung may problema ang mga security guard, siyempre, hindi pwedeng pabayaan ng PNP. Kasi bumirang yan sa kanila. Babalik yan sa kanila. Kasi remember, they are the one that needs to supervise and control. So, kaya, um, this is, I do not know, but for sure, yung mga lagay-lagay din na kaya. If you are in the security agency, you need also to do your, to give your SOP to the PNP. Kasi, kasi they will be the ones to assist you. Kaya, anyway, that's quality. No? So at present, the PNP, SAG, SP, or the Philippine Security Agency Boards, or Supervision Division, for the National and PNP, FE, SAG, or Firearm, and so you see, meron talagang naka-assign na intended for um, firearm and explosives. So it directs the team of police to issue rule and regulation concerning the implementing rules of RK 5887. And take note, this was um, effective October 3, 1972. And January, nagkaroon ng amendment by PD number 11 and 11. And again, amended in 2003 with title 2003 Revised Rules and Regulations Implementing RA 5487 as amended. So this was created, it started in 1972 and then nagkaroon na creation ng PADPAW 1958, nagkaroon ng amendment 1975 and then the last amendment Kasi pag sinabi mong amendment, there are some changes, revisions, may pinanggal, may binago, may pinagdag sa batas. Kung kaya, ang last na amendment nangyari, 2003. So, kung 2003 pa, ang last na amendment, ilang taon na yan sa ngayon? Uh, ilang taon na? 17? 16? 18 po. 18 now. Kayo, kaedad nito. Tama ka? Hindi. Yes, ma'am. Oh, kayo ka edad na ito. So meaning, 18 years ago na ang uh, batas natin with regards to the security um, at our agency in our country. Sa 18 years, for sure marami nang nangyari. Marami nang pagbabago. Medyo high-tech na ang mga signal na yun. And there is a need to amend naman yung batas. Kasi nga, um, hindi constant ang, ano, ang, ang nangyayari sa mundo natin. So, we need to adapt. And the same also with the security guards and security agency. Now, um, let us proceed with the type of security customer. Um, as what we have mentioned, security is um, making sure that we are free, we are far away from hazard. And we have defined hazard as something that could cause us uh, in danger or damage, diba? And so, there are two types of hazard, the natural hazard and the man-made hazard. So when we say natural hazard, of course, this is caused by natural phenomena. And example of this is storm, earthquake, typhoon, floods, fire, and light. light. Now, um, security officers are not only responsible for making us safe from criminals, from intruders. They should also be responsible in making sure that we are safe even in case of natural calamity or natural hazard. So kaya, kayong, kayong mga future security officers, you need also to know the basics of first aid. Kasi lamuwa, may dapat marunong kayong lumangoy, marunong kayo ng mga first aid sa lunod, sa, ano ba, sa mga cuts, mga sugat. You need to know. Kasi kung Kumbaga, hindi pwede nga mauna ang security guard sa gawas or kadalagan in case may arasang natural calamity. 
So that is abandonment of duty. So pwedeng matanggalan ka ng license for that, ma wala ka ta permission. We also have the money. And of course, when we say money, some this is done by individual. Okay. So uh, man-made, which is actually the act of omission or commission, both overt or covert by an individual or a group of an individual. So pag sinabi natin um, commission, ginawa. Omission meaning to say they plan pa lang. Yon. So uh, example of this is espionage. Like uh, when we say espionage, it's an act of spying. And sabotage is an act of destroying. So because of the state of mind of the individual. So alimbawa, may isang, may isang pumasok kapag pinagsisira ang mga gamit. Or even the employee ng, ng school or ng, ng establishment sa mismo ang sumira. Yan. So you need to make sure that the company is safe. Kaya, um, they need to secure people and the property. It's their responsibility. Okay? So those are the two uh, general types of security hazards. Now, in order for us to avoid, so I heard, in order for us to avoid those hazards, there are different types of barriers. We have the natural, the human, the animal, structural, and energy. So when you say natural, ano nga ang barrier? Sa inyong pagkakaintindi, ano nga ang barrier? Sa gabal, ma'am. Sa gabal, sa gabal. Sa gabal. Harang. 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 So, uh, in order for us to, kumbaga kung hindi man, mapaso at least ma ma tawag nito mapabagal ang pagpasok ng mga intruders or ma hindi ko ba ang impact ng sakuna ng risk ng mabawasan ma'am hindi ganoon ka bigat yes tama mabawasan so we have the natural human the animal barrier the structural and the energy uh, we will discuss this one by one, okay? Yes. Now, there are factors to be considered in providing the kind and degree of security. So, na kailangan ma alam natin kung anong klaseng security ang ilalagay natin dito sa lugar na ito or dito sa area na ito. Okay? So, katulad na lang na relative critically the importance of the product or service that the company is giving or producing. Meaning to say, ano bang klaseng uh, company etong, etong meron ka or etong binabantayan mo? Is it uh, food? Is it mga upuan lang naman? Kasi kinakailangan kung, kung, baga, kung ang binabantayan mo ay Pag in case na may mangyari, it could cause great damage, great damage sa, sa company, sa ibang tao, then you need to uh, give additional or you need to add the degree of security na kinakailangan mo. Pero kung halimbawa, mga ano lang mo na, mga bulak-bulak lang mo na, mga kailangan mo yun na Ayan, diba? So, unless lang ng mga mulak na lang worth millions of pesos. Diba? So, you need to consider is it critical and the other one is relative vulnerability. Meaning to say, is it weak? Pag sinabi mo kasi vulnerable, weak yan eh. How susceptible the establishment for the particular sabotage and espionage? So, weak ba yan? Kasi kung strong naman yan, halimbawa, we have discussed yung mga barriers natin which later we will discuss further, no? So, halimbawa, um, oo nga, meron, meron nga uh, 
malaking uh, alam mo, malaking pera kailangan bantayan dito sa lugar na ito. Pero napapalibutan naman siya ng tubig. Alam mo, sa gitna siya ng daga. So, ang security dyan, kumbaga, although kailangan naman tight pa rin kasi magudyan, pero the possibility na Ma, medyo matagalan ang tao kung hindi may plano siya na magnakaw. Hindi isa ka agad-agad makakanakaw kasi it's in the middle of the city. And it's an example of ano, no, natural barrier. No? Yung, ano mismo, yung river or yung ocean mismo is considered as a natural barrier. Now, um, there are factors to consider in providing security for the establishment. We need to consider the seat the size and the location. Is the company located in an area na maraming tao? Kasi pag maraming tao, siyempre, you need to increase the level of the security. Kahit damo ka sa pwede magnakaw. Another is the number and character of people. Ilang tao ba meron sa company na ito? Kung gamay lang man, kasi siyempre gamay lang food na security, kaya gamay lang magina ka. Bantayan. Now, kung madami naman, then, siyempre kailangan i-increase ang security. And another is kind of product. Ano ba yung, yung, ano mo, yung product mo? Is it something that kung manakaw, it could cause a risk sa mga tao, patulad na lang ng gamot? pagpalagay natin, or na, yung vaccine. Alam mo, wag ninakaw ang vaccine. So, anong mangyari nyo? Pinalitan na yun yun. So, it could cause grave damage to the citizens. Kaya, we need to establish great level of security. Depende sa kung anong product meron ka. Pero kung ang product mo, kamuti, saging, hindi mo gid kailangan sa Damo-damo na security. Yung pagkakaroon ng tent is actually a good thing. Kung sinako na nasaging, sinako na kakamuti, kung may taas-taas na, 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 na kudal, siyawan na sa pagkapasaka. Diba? So that's actually uh, uh, an example. Okay? Um, let's proceed with the crimes to look into by public and private security. So since kayo, remember ha, when we say security, we're not only referring to security guards, security officers. We are also referring even to the PNP. Kasi the responsibility, the task of the PNP is also to secure people and property. So it's just that ito, they are considered <laughs> kumaga sila naman is um, ano, ang security officer naman is nasa private. Yung mga PNP naman ay public. But, uh, PNP, military, public security. Okay? So, uh, katulad ng mga lahat, kailangan ng PNP. Yes, tama. Okay. What have you noticed? Uh, sandali, uh, before I will discuss, uh, like diamond, tama, no? What have you discussed sa ano, sa, ah, what have you noticed sa mga jewelry shop? Diba? Aside from naka, siyempre, glass, may, may, ano pa talaga, may mga, may mga, tawag ko may, may grills pa gilid, diba? CCTV. Oh, may CCTV. May Sensors. CCTV, may CCTV, may security guard pa. So, ganun sensors. kahigpit yung sensors. Yeah. Wow. May mga sensors pa. So, ganun kahigpit yung kanilang security. Now, kasi nga, di ba, security could be a verb. It could also be a noun. Verb kasi, syempre, you are securing the, the area. And security could also be the person na responsible for securing the area. So, depende kung paano mo. Kung ano, kung, kung tatanungin kayo, what is security, then, okay, uh, security, then, uh, how would you like me to define it as a verb or as a noun? Kasi, uh, security could be a verb, 
security could also be announced. So, depende kung paano. So, kaya kung, kung may magsagot na security is <clears throat> yung the, the person who is guarding the facility, it's actually correct pa rin. Pero yung mas tamang terms na ginagamit natin din doon is security guard or security officer, security personnel. Yun. Madami. Damo na lang din sa mga terms na nabala. So, these are the clients that the security, even public or private security, should always uh, check. No, We have the espionage. So, it's an act of gathering information. Meaning to say, um, halimbawa, if you are securing, securing a particular um, company and then matingala ka nalang ha, may tao nga always nag-affiliate. Ano kaya ang purpose niya? Ah, kaya nag-a-ano nag siya? Nag-a-always na sa the rate. So, that person might be doing, ano, or might be committing espionage. And espionage is an act of gathering information. And the person, okay, uh, uh, espionage comes from a French word espion, which means I. So this is used to estimate or determine the best possible means of sabotage. Kasi ganito, if may plan na akong sabotage, sabotage, alam mo, sirain ang kumpanya, so hindi yun basta basta sirain ang kumpanya. Kailangan mo dun ang ng 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 no? um, spy is the agent of espionage. They are very dangerous because they of their skills in deception and undercover work. So yung mga spy, they are very advanced. Very dangerous in the sense that you cannot tell whether this person is bad or good. They are waiting for you para sa um, the, These are the methods used by the agents of espionage. So how are they, how do they do, or how do they gather information? About stealing or buying information from the employees. Like if I want to, to get information from a Ang mga nabawa, a competitor. Ano ako, ano ako, uh, anong company, select pa. And then, siyempre kalabat ko ang anong ano, ice cream company, Magnolia. So, ano uh, may bagong pag-release na flavor si Magnolia. So, ang gagawin ko is, um, titingnan ko, uh, hanap ako ng empleyado ng Magnolia na pwede kong susulan. Sige, para sabihin sa akin kung ano yun. That's um, one method na agent of espionage or not spy. Um, another, by using various forms of threats or extorting information. Pag sinabi mo, um, i-threat mo, it could be you threaten the employee or someone, the relative, yan, na, or the owner in order to get that information. By means of blackmail, halimbawa, um, may alam ka about doon sa tao na yun, and so, may kinihingit ng information, and kung hindi isa magbibigay, then, you threat him with the, you blackmail him with the information that you have. Yan. Obtaining or giving information from social gathering. Yan. Yung mga spy na, they got other information by just simply attending social gatherings. Um, by use of fake organization as a person. Yan, halimbawa. Okay, uh, ano kang taga um, NGO kami, non-government organization kami, and we are seeking help for your company because we are your company and other um, stealing records 
and the use of subversive activities. What is a subversive activity? Mga harsh activities that could put our lives or the that could put the lives of the employees in danger. So this is espionage. <clears throat> then we have the sabotage. So sabi natin, after you gather the information, the whatever information you've gathered can be used in order for you to do the sabotage. So sabotage is an act of destroying, damaging, or any evil motive that will lead, lead to stoppage of the normal operation of the company, factory, plant, or establishment. So it comes from a French word, sabo, which means wooden sleeper. Saboteur is the agent of sabotage. Now, um, anything that could damage or that could stop the normal operation of the company is considered as sabotage. Katulad na lang na, halimbawa, may klase ako. You don't want to attend my class. So, ang ginawa ninyo, kinutol ninyo ang uh, line ng kuryente para, kasi I need to charge my laptop or else kung hindi siya nakacharge, hindi ma-on ang computer. So, ang ginawa ninyo, you cut off the line of the electricity and so, hindi na ako makaklase. That's an example of sabotage. Meaning to say, you you do something na maka-stop or maka-destroy ng normal operation. Halimbawa, um, you don't want to, ano, you don't want to attend class. So, ang ginawa mo, ipilidot mo ang fire alarm. So, siyempre, nag, nag, ano, nag-tingog ang fire alarm. Siyempre, akala natin may fire. So, siyempre, we do the routine, no? yung bababa ka, siyempre, aalis ka sa lugar. And siyempre, pag ganun, wala klase. That's sabotage. Okay? And there are three types of, the person who do it is called saboteur. And there are three types of saboteur. The enemy agent, the traitorous, traitorous person, and the irresponsible person. When we say the enemy agent, yung kalaban mo talaga, sinabotahe ka. Halimbawa, example, may class ka, tapos hindi mo balikan, tumigo mo, class yung mga ang class mo. So, ginsirakan ka na sa room dito sa class mo. So, that's an enemy agent. Kasi, hindi mo, at saan yun, mas mag-call yun sa trade to this person. Ah. Ang enemy is yung kalaban mo talaga. So, halimbawa, may kalaban ka, akigil sa inyo, ginutod niya ang break sa inyo, or ginutod niya ang break sa inyo nga, park plug sa inyo nga motor, para hindi ka makalakas, o hindi ka makagamit. That's enemy agent. The responsible person, may mga tao na um, due to due to ano, negligence, due to uh, being irresponsible, hindi nila namamalaya na nakaka, nakaka-cost na pala sila ng pag-stop ng normal operation. Kung minsan may mga ano ba, plus na sa pangahan mo sa because of your irresponsibility, yan. Kaya, imbis na, hello, may program dahil sa katangahan mo na sandad ka, na utob mo ang wire, yun, that's that's ano that's sabotage. Kaya kung marinig niyo ang sabotage and espionage, at least hindi na kayo makonfuse. Kasi ang espionage, when you gather information, when you do spy jobs, ganun. Ang sabotage naman is yung may sinira ka na talaga. Uh, there are two types of sabotage, the mechanical and psychological sabotage. Now, when we say mechanical sabotage, it's an act wherein they use the object or substance within the area of an establishment. Halimbawa, um, dole field. Siyempre, pineapple industry, no? 
uh, fruit and then uh, juice. So example of mechanical sabotage is contamination. Like you use foreign materials to apply in the establishment. Halimbawa, you wanted to contaminate yung mga juice. So, dapat yellow, ginupakan mo siyang food color. Ma red. So, nag-iba na. So, siyempre, pag nag-red yan sa, hindi na yun, kumbaga, ma-ana, kumbaga, it would cause damage, financial damage to the company. Breakage. Halimbawa, magitanggal ka lang dito ng parts ng machine. Wala mo man totally ginto ba pero magitanggal ka. It's also considered as mechanical sabotage. Substitution. Like instead of um, sugar, ang nilagay mo is acid. Yan. It's another sabotage. Uh, omission. When you kung, uh, omit something, may, may kinuha ka. Sabi dito, this is committed by means of doing by an individual which can cause destruction inside the company or establishment. So, sa substitution, kadalasan may pinalit. So, omission naman may pinagigal. May inumit ka. May, alam mo, uh, kailangan ng, sa, sa company na ito, kailangan ng oil. So, ang ginawa mo, tinanggal mo ng oil. So, that's another sabotage. Abrasive, a special type of contamination by using a type of material that will grind metal. So yun, it's also another sabotage. Explosive, yan. Meaning to say, uh, you wanted to explode. So, kung babawasan ninyo, mechanical sabotage, it's purely done with the, the machine, the equipment. So, um, we've mentioned that one example of uh, mechanical sabotage is explosive, diba? explosion. So, reason, there are reasons why explosives become popular to the saboteur. Um, number one, because of devastating or damaging effects. Very, syempre, pag, pag sumabog yan, very big and damaged. Um, because of the availability of delaying device, like hintayin ko muna na pumasok talaga sa, sa opisina or yung kalaban ko andyan talaga sa opisina bago ko masubuhin. Yan. May timer sa na pwede mong i-delay or pwede namang i-advance yun. Um, evidence will disappear and then because explosion could cause fire kaya pag na so, yung evidences, mawawala tayo. And meron tayong mga explosives na ginagamit. We have the low intensity explosive and the high intensity. So, uh, low intensity explosive very, is very sensitive to heat and it can explode by means of fire, friction, or storm. And simply from the word low, ang damage niya, Hindi din ganon pa sakit. We also have the high intensity explosive which it may be detonated by means of shock, jarring, or shake. Alam mo, high intensity, nilagay mo, gamay lang na uyog, gamay lang na jarring, shock, magsabog. So that's actually high intensity explosive. Okay? Um... Are you raising your hand, my concern? Would you like to I don't know, add or ano ba? Wala. Let me continue. Now, uh, talking about high intensity explosives, we have examples here, you know, the dynamite, the TNT, the plastic explosives, the Molotov bomb, and the stench bomb. So, um, dynamite is from a liquid which is manufactured and usually homemade and popular use, popularly used by illegal fishermen and miners. Don't you know that it was, um, ano nga ang pangalan ng Nobel? Uh, Albert Nobel or ano ba? Uh, yung, yung nagbibigay ng Nobel Prize. 
don't you know na siya ang nakadiscover ng dynamite? And because of his creation, actually, um, na ano niya, na nakakreate siya ng something that could cause destruction. Kaya, in return, um, gumawa siya ng Nobel Prize niya na ang mga tao gusto ng mga bagay-bagay, okay, mga outstanding na mga invention para, ano, uh, this is only based on what I have heard, no? uh, you can verify that the information is not uh, 100% sure verified. But this is based also on the story na binigay na na in order para ma-keep yung kanyang mind, yung kanyang conscience, kaya na-establish na na Nobel Prize. Kasi he, he, he invented, he created something that could cause destruction. And that's dynamite. The TNT or the trimi, tri, uh, trinitrotolin, okay, which is very popular sa military. Ito yung binagano ko siya lang ano, napang Habok. We also have the C4, the plastic, Molotov, so these are bombs. The stents bomb naman is um, chemical is carried out by the rocketeers and with this agreeable problem. So ito, hindi siya sumasabog, pero it actually um, produce uh, this agreeable odor. Yung mabaho, mabaho na maabot sa point na magsuka. Yan. So, kadalasan ito yung mga ginagamit sa mga riots para hindi ko sila mamatay pero yan naman. Um, they, because magkakaroon sila ng problema sa kanilang pag-hina. Ang personal naman. Yan. So, since one, a small, a small bomb designed to give off a foul odor when it explodes, yan. So, plus ang bako, baog nga, ano nila, how nga, nga, itlog, no. yan, ihaboy mo, di ba, kung masinutan mo mga suruka kapit. So, that's an example. So, how much more kaya sa steps ba? Kasi kung makikita niyo sa mga military operations, no, mga suwat, if you're watching mga movies, may mga tinatakon na kung minsan yung mga victims or yung mga tao na bakit ka, because of the power of the We also have um, here, yan, and these are uh, the components, meantime, of the sense bomb. The zinc valerate, the valeriana acid, the butyric acid, and the hydrogen sulfide. So these are some common components of stents bomb. Okay. Uh, we also have arson. And uh, when you say arson, it's the malicious burning of one's property. So, uh, may mga nagsasabotahe na they set fire sa company. So, ang purpose nila, ang objective nila, gone. Okay. Losing by burning the property, they can recover from losing and revenge. Ano ba? May galit sa may ari ng company. So, pwede na lang sinigin. Or, it could be because of pyromania. May mga empleyadong pyromania. When we say pyromania, it's a person who is fond of looking fire. Anong, ano ba lang sa he gets satisfaction, gratification by Simply seeing fire, especially kung nakodakod mo na, so nagagratify siya, na, 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 ano siya, nasasatisfy siya. So may mga ganong rason kung bakit they set property, they set company into fire. So fire is also, uh, other reference, uh, they call it also as combustion, which is defined as a chemical process by which Heat and flame will come out. So fire and combustion are sometimes synonymous. Okay. Uh, other authors, other experts, they are using it interchangeably. Now, what are the causes of fire? Bakit nagkakaroon ng tunog? Or ano ba? Ano ba kadalasan ang cause ng tunog? Okay. 
it's because of the flame, the gas, or the electricity. Kadalasan, ito yung mga nakikita natin or naririnig natin, no? Yung faulty wiring or um, octopus, ano ba yan? Wiring. Kaya nagkakaroon ng sunog. Uh, because of the, yan, mga chemicals, too much heat of the sun, and even the sun. Okay. So, uh, if you are a security officer, you need to know what class of fire ang nasusunog. Halimbawa, sa area of responsibility mo, nasusunog. You need to know what class of fire it is para alam mo rin kung paano siya akulukin. Katulad na lang ng class A fire. So, ang class A fire, um, it's a class of fire kung saan ang mga nasusunog ay yung mga ordinary combustible materials. Katulad ng papel, ng eto, this is an example of uh, a combustible, a class A uh, a combustible material, ordinary combustible material. So, at madali lang itong angkulahin, but simply, um, getting water, is habulin mo siya, ay, anong siya, o, oh, yun, pwedeng fire extinguisher, okay, uh, or pwede rin naman, tubig, yan, so meron tayo, we also have the class B, kung saan, ang class B naman is, um, make, if the combustible material is make it, um, liquid, yan, so, composed of petroleum product. So, um, what you can do is, ito, blanket to burning material. Like, um, usak na blanket, i takluban mo siya. Yan. That is class B fire. Class C naman is composed of electrical energy. So, meaning, ang nasusunod is electric wires, mga wirings. So, dito, kailangan mo na uh, fire extinguisher intended for the class C fire. So, dapat alam mo rin how to use the fire extinguisher. Kasi baka hindi mo alam paano gumamit ng fire extinguisher. Uh, class D, composed or disposed by combustible metal. So, we have the combustible metals. And so, you need to, tulad na lang ang halawa, nasusunog. And then, ang mga nasusunog is yung, ano kani, ng hello, welding rod, welding machines, yan. So, you need to know how to extinguish those um, materials. And uh, meron tayo mga different types of fire extinguishers. Uh, pero most of the fire extinguishers <laughs> can actually extinguish class A, B, C, or D. Yan. Depende. Makita niyo yan. The next meeting, I will bring fire extinguisher para makita niyo. Okay? So, these are the different classes of fire. Now, what is the reason in classifying fire? So, the reason is that in order to determine the type of fire extinguisher to be used, yan, yung sabi ko kanina, in order to reduce the burning material, that's firefighting, in order to deal with the weakness of a person. Tulad na lang ng ano ba, uh, may mga ano ba, may mga empleyado pa tayo dito na merong mga subversive activities na ginagawa sa company. And also, in order for us to lessen the economic sabotage. So the activity of the business establishment against the government. Could this cause not only damage to the company, but could also damage uh, the normal operation of the company. So, kailangan natin malaman. Then, we have the subversion. So, the objectives of subversive activities, bakit nila ginagawa, is to determine the authority to under weaken the organization in order that they can manage or take over the organization. So, ano ni silang mga subversions or subversive activities? Okay, etong rumor mongering. Like, 
kasi but ano ba ang precedent sa sa school ang mga ang mga na sempre if that is the same pag nagpalabas ka ng mga fake news na yan pag nagpalabas ka ng mga rumors na yan masisira mo or sis, ang plan mo is sirain ang integridad ang dignidad ng tao and so with that it would weaken his um kumbaga kung, kung anong klaseng wall man meron sa then you would weaken that kung kaya hello gamay gamay lang hadlok na sa sarili because you wanted to take over the organization kung may mga tao na idemanda ka ka idemanda ka ka may mga ganung tao that is actually actually an example of subversion or subversive propaganda legal action arm threat murder kidnapping and even other violent acts are also considered subversion or subversive activity then we have the riot yeah kadalasan sa company because we're um in the industry we are uh, dealing with the workers the people kadalasan isa din sa mga problema na nangyayari sa mga kumpanya at sa industry ay ang riot yan when we say riot it refers to the unlawful assembly that resulted to violent disturbance of peace so uh, halimbawa kayo you work in a company tapos bigla na lang nag riot so syempre ang mangyayari niyan is walang operation di ba So what are the causes of riot? Kadalasan, uh, it's because of panic of the employees, the strike, and the mob. Ano itong mob? A promiscuous multitude of people, rude and disorderly individuals. Kanang mga, when you say mobsters, kanang yung sa atin, sa mga gangs, sa mga daw, mga, mga, ano, mga others, the others, and so yan. We have different types of mob: the aggressive, the escape, the acquisitive, and the expressive. When you say aggressive, it means mga tumbuli, mga escape mob. Ato yung mga um, parang panandalian lang, like giningo ng hindi na para may sakasan sila or para madayur sa attention. Acquisitive mob. Ato yung they do the the riot because they wanted to acquire something may makuha sila the expressive naman is they just wanted to voice out to ano mga kinakain nila and this is an example of okay then we have the crowd a temporary congregation of people like try to imagine halimbawa dapat alas 8 nagtatrabaho pero what is ang mga tao ara ka nang sa gawas sa opisina that's crowd the temporary congregation of people so there are uh, two types of crowd the physical and psychological crowd so physical is syempre nang nagtumpok-tumpok lang pa congregation of people without interest The psychological naman, congregation with common interest in a certain thing. Meaning kasi nagtumpok-tumpok ang mga tao na may pareho sa, sa interest. Like, aring tao against ni sila, nagtumpok-tumpok sila, against ni sila sa, alam mo, um, vice president for finance. So, nagtumpok sila. Yan. So, this is psychological crowd in the sense that Siyempre kung ako ang Vice President Parthenon, nakita ko ay ako nga po, kung ito, balaan ko, abot lang ako sa ako. So, basi, nag-a-plan mo sila nga, na i-adhon ako, or i-threaten ako, or may hinuan sila sa ako. So, it would cause psychological, um, ano nga tawag ito, um, stress sa akin. So, there are two types of psychological crowd, the casual and the international. Um, so casual, common interest only for short duration, meaning to say uh, they just uh, join because they have common interest. Pero ang nangyayari, nabubuwag din. The international naman is uh, they, they gather for a long duration, for a long period of time. 
So yan, kailangan. If you are a um, police officer assigned in a particular like company or establishment, you need to check on that. Because basic bala, may isa ka member maghambal na kasi di uh, ano ho na na siya. So it would cause problem. It would cause uh, danger and it would harm other individuals. Uh, we also have the filterage. Okay, petty theft, one of the most annoying and common human hazard. That when we say filterage, I'm like, what is it? Uh, mouse, mouse, um, silangan, gindalang sa balay mo, alcohol, gindalang mo, paper, gindalang mo, no pa, uh, kapi sa office niyo, gindalang mo. Casual, we have casual and systematic filterage. So, cash one, one has failed due to inability to resist the unexpected opportunity and has little fear that there is detection. So, kasi nang nag-attend ka sa ano ba ba? Nag-attend ka sa meeting and then nakapasok ka and then may nakita ka na uy, no, may isa, wala nang sasain mo and so, give to her. Kadalasan ang filterage ang nangyayari sa mga ano, sa mga plantito, plantita nang wala tapos may yung pool ka na. So that's an example lang ha. Pero sa office may mga ganun. Ito mga tao na they do not afraid na ano, madakpan sila. The systematic plan has deal with preconceived plan. We need to say may may plano na talaga. Meron na talaga ano, um, top na top. May, may plano na talaga. Meron na talaga sila uh, uh, na establish na kung paano nila gagawin. And this is for economic gain. Now you see, sa so systematic coverage, dito papatok yung halimbawa, nag, nag, ano, nag pin up si, si treasurer at saka si auditor. Yan, pwede yun. Sa casual naman, at yung uh, ano, ang, gusto mo lang ano, Paon mo lang yung mga kapi, sa kabax na kapi, yun, that's the casual. So systematic, it's actually pre-planned, pre-conceived. May, meron ng pre-conceived plan, may nakaplan na. Yeah. So this is filterage. So there are different methods, yeah, like classic method, using fake documents, removal, and dispose. So classic method, simple lang, simple lang pa alam. And then, ito naman, using fake document, halimbawa, supposed to be may i-attach ka na document na ito dapat, so ang ginawa mo, kasi systematic siya na preference, ibang document ang i-attach mo. Removal of the item, disposal of the thing. So these are the methods of filtering. So, there are limiting factors of filtering. You need to uh, determine the value of the item, was it very expensive ba or mura lang ba? Dalit lang ba siya matago? And dalit lang ba siya i-transport? Yan. Kasi, katulad na lang sa school, good like magkawat sa computer kay una, dako, mag-agay ka sa guide, makita sa game. Diba? So, siyempre hindi. So, anong kadalasan na hindi makita? Mga mouse, mga keyboard. Diba? Sa, ano, sa mga private school, kasi sa public schools may mga gano'n. Nawawala ang keyboard, nawawala ang mouse, nawawala ang webcam, kasi madali lang ma. Okay. And this is an example of filtering. Kadalasan, may mga tao na nagpakamit nito because they are suffering ito. Yan, cryptomania. Cryptomania. Ano yung cryptomania? Ang cryptomania is actually, ano siya, it's more of a psychological problem kung saan ang um, tao meron nito, they are fond of getting property ng ibang tao. Uh, na, 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 ng iba. Katulad na lang ng, kumbaga, hindi isa na ako. <clears throat> Kasi ang cryptomania is, parang, they cannot resist na punin, even if meron na sila. Um, katulad na lang sa, ano, sa, kay Lucy Torres. She was, actually identified na merong uh, psychological problem na cryptomania kung saan ano, she cannot resist na magkuha ng mga gamit even if mayaman na siya. Yeah. 
And ang tao na yun na merong cryptomania ay cryptomania. Yan, that's the person. Mania. Mas maisi na mas sa tao. So there is satisfaction on the part of the person committing a crime. So theft, uh, simple theft, qualified, okay, theft is, ito, kung may kinuha, alam mo, nakita mo kwarta. Kung nakita ka ang kwarta, binuha mo, nagtagawin mo, wala mo nabuli. Don't you know that you are uh, violating yung batas and that's punishable kasi that's simple theft. So, kung may makita mo kwarta, um, that's, kung kuha nyo ka, wala nyo rin ulit, then, pwede ka mong file ang katumakit. Because it's a crime. So, um, simple theft without violation of trust and confidence. The qualified naman is taking property of another with violation of trust and confidence. So, tulad na lang, Qualified theft, malibawa, need nyo, or kasambahay nyo, or hindi yan, dalawa, ako, may gituwa ko sa school. Siyempre, the school, the president has trusted me, na hindi ka mang gawat, hindi ka mang, and then, naku, nagituwa ka, then you will be qualified, or you will be charged for qualified theft. Kasi merong trust and confidence. So, kung halimbawa, gagawatan ka sa best friend mo, qualified theft. Pero kung wala, hindi mo sa kilala, yung kakawapan sila, yun, yun, may ginukuha lang sa or sabi, may nagulang sa inyo din, simple test. Okay? So, subliter is um, those people or somebody who gets things or property displayed in store without email. So, these are the things na hinag mo. Okay? Mga subliter. Yeah. And that's the end of the slide. Okay? So I hope you have learned something. Let me stop. Now, um, next week,